time in nearly five years, Lennox Lewis in the role of Challenger will enter the ring first. Jordan, we've talked about the significance in the past of a fighter trying to come back from a knockout loss against the same fighter who knocked him out. What must Lewis do in round one to reverse the psychology with which they left South Africa? You gotta make certain he doesn't get into any exchanges so that he does not taste and remember probably some injured confidence in there. One shot could bring it all back to him. I've been in that position before. You remember those knockouts too well. So his best thing is to stay out of exchanges, let him throw the shot from long ranges, don't get hit. A rather pointed choice of entry music here as Lewis walks in to James Brown's The Big Payback. Well, Lennox Lewis has, at least in his public utterances, been in total denial of what happened in South Africa. He has a chance tonight to turn around that lazy, complacent, arrogant, performance incidentally Jim the odds when this fight opened were somewhere between four and five to one in favor of Lewis the latest report it's down to two to one so the betting public is giving Rockman a serious chance to repeat South Africa. Well, I don't think there's any question that observing the outward manifestations of the psychological interplay between the two fighters in these last few weeks leading up to the fight, the general perception is that Rachman is the one who's comfortable and likes his position. Lewis is on the defensive. Lennox says that's not the case. I'll reverse that as soon as I get into the ring tomorrow night. We shall see. Remember that his history is when he gets angry or respectful or even fearful of an opponent, he tends to become more defensive, which is to his advantage as a fighter. That's his best style. His natural style. A cautious, stand-your-ground counterpuncher. Here comes the man who might be seen as the attacker. Certainly he was the attacker in South Africa. When he went to Johannesburg to fight Lennox Lewis, he was widely seen as an ordinary fighter. Larry, in recent weeks, he's been at great pains to portray himself as just an ordinary guy who happens to hold the heavyweight championship of the world. How much chance is there at, that at the end of this night, we'll look back and say, well, he was just ordinary after all? Well, he is just an ordinary guy in the sense, one of 12 children, brother who's a doctor, father who's a Muslim pris prison minister, an ordinary guy who sold drugs as a teenager, had five bullets removed from his stomach, and 500 plus stitches put into his head after a fatal car accident. An ordinary guy who went from thug to pug, the heavyweight champion of the world, just about as ordinary as you can be, Jim. Like so many American heavyweights of recent vintage, he came relatively late to the sport after having shown his athletic talent in other pursuits like football and swimming. His father wanted him to swim in a swim club as a teenager, and he did, but he's approached a steep learning curve in boxing pretty doggone well. Yes, he has. You know, we thought four or five years ago that he was a comer, that he had a chance, that he showed athletic ability, that he showed intelligence in the ring, but then he seemed to crest, go into a valley when he was knocked out by Moschier. But this is a sport where one punch can change your life, and it changed his and maybe ours. So, George, is it Hasim Rahman's job now to go into this first round and try to hit Lennox Lewis as soon as possible with another big right-hand shot. Remember, the knockout that he got over Lewis kind of developed itself. He didn't go out there searching for it. He, the knockout came to him. You go out there searching for it and you find yourself in a fix that so many fighters have been in with Lennox Lewis, trying to reach that long left jab, trying to get too much distance, close that distance. Let it happen. It happened before, it can happen again. 
A sizable number of ringside experts making exactly that pick in the last few days, watching the two fighters leading up to the fight. Many of the writers and broadcasters now saying, Rock's going to do it again. Let's see if he does as we go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening. And it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Lion Promotions, main events, the Mandalay Bay, and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBC, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Mauricio Suleiman, the IBF, President Marion Mohammed, Supervisor Mahassan Scott, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Luther Mack, Commissioners Amy Ayub, Dr. Tony Alamo, Glenn Carano, and Dr. Flip Bomansky, with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, all from Las Vegas, Nevada, Patricia Jarman Manning, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And the third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, he is working in this, his 145th world title bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. Live from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's time for the bout you've all been waiting for, the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing white trunks with red trim, hailing from London, England. He weighed in at a ready 246 and one half pounds. His record stands at 38 wins, two losses, one draw, with 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 1988 Olympic gold medalist, the former two-time and undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Here is tonight's challenger, introducing Lennox Lewis. opponent across the ring on my right fighting out of the red corner the defending world champion entering the ring wearing red white and blue trucks fighting out of and representing his home of Baltimore Maryland he weighed in at 236 pounds with a record of 35 wins two losses he has 29 wins coming by way of knockout Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Please welcome the WBC, the IBF, and the IBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the hard-hitting Hasim, the Rock Rothman. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Joe Cortez. All right, pull up that T-shirt. Jack. Gentlemen, we want all the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I want good sportsmanlike conduct. Guys, these trunks here, Lennox, are a little high. Punches here, above here, they're, they're good. Same thing with you, punches here a little. Trunks a little high, punches here is good. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. God bless you. God bless America. Touch them up. There are two common sense outcomes, Puck, here. One, a repeat knockout by Rahman. The other, a defensive decision by Lewis. This being boxing, 
we often get uncommon sense, something we never foresee. Those are the two forms of conventional wisdom. There's no sweat on Rockman. Rockman is pretty dry. That is not good, is it, George? That's the way you want to be counted. Now, do you suppose Lennox Lewis is alert and aware enough to note that Rockman is dry? He should benefit himself just by him being in that position. When the guy's dry like that, don't let him get sweaty and loose. Rockman coming back with the jab. Trying to get that weapon started just as he did in round one in Johannesburg. Lennox has got to make certain that his back is always at least three feet away from those ropes. Give him time to be hit and move out of the way. Neither man has a good history with his back against the ropes. Rockman's two losses against Moscow Aventua both came when he got trapped against the ropes and hammered by power punches. Hard right hand by Lewis over the top lands on Rockman's chin. That may have been a more effective right hand than any of the right hands Lennox threw in South Africa. I see blood already on Rockman's face. Let's hope it's the red from the gloves and not blood. When Lennox throws that left jab, he has to constantly move. He can't stand there and see if the jab lands. He got to keep moving. Step and a half. Jab, step. Jab, step. Step. Halfway through the round, Rockman has yet to throw a right hand. So it appears that Rockman has come to box, not to punch, at least for the moment. Lewis, his normal patient self, sticking the jab and allowing Rockman to come to him. In the first fight, Rockman jabbed to the chest. He didn't reach the Linux head. He better go back to the basic. Keep your jab headed to his chest. Everything good happens. If you're in Lennox Lewis's corner, you like what you've seen in these first couple of minutes. If you're in Hasim Rockman's corner, you may still be waiting for your man to get properly warmed up. Somebody is bleeding, and I think it is Rockman because there's blood on the left shoulder of Lewis. I think the right hand opened Rockman's left eye. And that left eye was bleeding in South Africa at the moment when Rockman knocked Lewis out. It created a sense of urgency for Rockman in South Africa, and he's bleeding above the left eye now. You don't want him to let Lennox Lewis get his ribbon with his jab. I'm told that the replay is going to show the right hand was on the chin. So maybe it's the jab that opened the left eye. It's a good right hand. That's the point. But there's no question Rachman is bleeding from above the left eye. That is his lead eye. It's the eye that Lewis will be targeting with his jab. It's a disadvantage for Hasim Rachman from the get-go. Good round for Lewis. He drew blood. Keep pumping the jab, baby. Watch your right hand. You still have to get a little bit more of the hooks off from down here, but you get the hook off, okay? Fighting a good fight. Good fight. <laughs> Rockman's cut man is the excellent Miguel Diaz. It's nice and calm, baby. That jab is doing a toll. You don't hurt him already. Put the right hand behind him. Come behind with the left hook. Suck it in. Yeah. You okay, baby? Miguel got you. You okay? Let's take a look at the replay, Larry. That could have been the jab. And from no, the reaction it was, right of, hand. it was a right hand a while before then that did all of that. Well, from Rockman's reaction, he knows he was bleeding. That was not the jab to do it. Punch to do it. Jabs in round one. Lewis threw 37 of them and landed 17. The statistical marker on Lewis in those fights in which he throws more than 30 jabs per round, he's awfully hard to handle. Rockman threw 30 jabs in the first round and landed 16. So he's off to a good start as well. He's allowing Lewis to use the middle of the ring. It's what he shouldn't do. Lewis' back should always be two feet from the rope. Nevada State oh, Athletic no, Commission no, Executive no. Director Mark Ratner no, 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 assures no, no, no. us that the cut over Rockman's eye was caused by a punch, not by a butt. So it's a legal cut. I saw the right hand, that's for sure. I don't think Rockman saw it coming. 
Lennox Lewis threw 37 dabs in round one. If he throws 37 dabs around, Emmanuel Stewart, his trainer, is going to be very happy with the way Lewis is prosecuting the fight. There's a left hook that lands and a right to the body. Lewis oh, oh, only hurts oh, himself oh, when he gives him to these oh, close exchanges. Hey, if he can stay on the outside, the head, the head, let's go. close exchanges, he's going to hurt. There he jabs and steps back. That's part of the plan. Jab, step back, keep the distance between himself and Rockman. Now Lewis is getting closer to the ropes. This is what Rockman should oh, yeah. want bring, now. Bring, bring up, bring up. Make him keep his back on those ropes. And that same right hand is always there for you. The exchange is still in the center of the ring for the moment. Lewis trying to keep his jab upstairs. Now he throws to the body. A tactic that worked so well for Rockman in South Africa. Let go, let go. Some of the let jabs go. that Lewis is landing are the hardest I've ever seen him land. That's where it has to be. It's got to be hard. He's got to puff you up so I mean, that you can there keep, been, there make there the man time, play his dish. Yeah, yes. there have been times when he's just been sort of painting his opponent and, and moving away at the same time. But he's throwing some hard left hands tonight. This is indeed a very aggressive jabbing performance by Lewis. And you saw him jab to the top of the head, then bring the right hand over the top, George. He loves to hide the right hand by jabbing you up on the head. Once again, Lewis's legs are a little too close to the ropes. That's where he's going to find his troubles if he finds them at all. Back is getting even closer now. He's got to stay in the middle of the ring. Rockman is starting to get him to go on the ropes now. How do you like the way Rockman's working his way back into it? He's got his body, got Lennox back on the rope. Lennox is in an excellent position now. Stay in the middle of the ring. Lennox misses with a big left hook as round two comes to a close. after throwing a series of jabs lands a clean right, left hook and here some jabs that is one stiff jab and he's thrown 68 jabs in the first two rounds he's never lost a fight in which he's averaged 30 jabs per round <laughs> through round two by copy box numbers of 72 total connected punches 55 are jabs so it has been a jabbing contest up to a point but lewis did land the one big right hand in round number one and he drew blood, so perhaps Rockman got under Lewis's skin with the taunting, but Lewis got under his skin with a punch. Lewis's corner told him, don't worry about the left hand, don't worry about the hook, just stay out of the right hand, that's your harm's way. And Lewis is doing a good job, but you gotta step back to your left every now and then, make him throw the hook, make Rockman throw his hook. Rockman doesn't seem to have any confidence in a good, strong left hook. What do you want to do is make him throw it. Just make him do it. Rockman contends in sparring. His left hook is getting better. But he's been a one-two fighter through most of his career. Jab, right cross. As for that matter, has Lewis. There's a left hook by Lewis, and it lands. It hurt. Not only did it land, it hurt Rockman. Now you don't want to get too overconfident with a guy who's knocked you out. Keep the hurt on. Keep the rounds coming. Rockman trying to pound to the body as he gets in close. Lewis lands another stiff jab, and Rockman backs Rack out. There's the hook. Make him throw those hooks. Lewis is doing a good job of that. 
He seems for the moment, George, ooh, to have nullified Rachman's right hand. How's he doing it? Well, he's hurt him from long range, as we said earlier. Hits him with a good right hand and never tries to finish it. This is not a Lennox Lewis who is especially defensive. He's, he's boxing and punching. This is a Lennox Lewis who's commanding the space in the ring in exactly the same way he did not do it in South Africa. Rockman can still reel this fight in, but he's going to have to get Lennox Lewis on those ropes and make him, now you go, make him make, make a believe out of that left hook. Rockman finally lands a left hook. Lennox's there. knees are trembling already because of a left hook. Uh, bring, bring, bring up, he's holding a little bit this time, Lennox Lewis. That left hook rung his bell. But the jab comes back. And when Lewis doubles up and triples up on the jab, he keeps the space between himself and Rachman. Rockman dabbing to the body again. Lewis' hands are down. He's close to the rope. What more can you ask for if you're Rockman? Every time he come at you, do like this, put them hands up, that kills everything. Just keep doing that, you can't get over your arms. Every time you make any kind of retreat, to you, to, I mean, run to you, put your hands up high. That stops everything. Why are you moving the bucket for us? Good, just relax yourself, champ. Put the knees in the bottle of the Put the knees. Lennox Lewis may have been outwitted by the verbally sharp champion he is not being out hit by him first three rounds have followed the lewis plan particularly in the sense that he's throwing the jab with great frequency averaging 34 jabs per round he landed 17 out of 34 jabs in round three that's a great statistical indicator for lewis from copy box harold letterman how'd you score the first three rounds okay jim three to nothing 30 to 27 Lennox Lewis, Jim, when a guy circles to his right like Lennox is doing, it's an unnatural move for right-hand fighter. He's doing it beautifully, so that rock can't hit him with that big right hand. Good ring general shot for Lennox Lewis. Another thing, in all the exchanges, Lennox will get off first, keep Rockman off balance, so Rockman can't get set to punch. Watch this, Lennox is always going to land the first punch. And perhaps by way of trying to ask his fighter to be even more aggressive, Emmanuel Stewart, between rounds, said to Lennox Lewis, Lennox, this man can't counterpunch. Go get him. Yeah, but the one thing that lives in Lennox Lewis' head, that night in Africa. Yep. You can't take that away from him. You know, even his own corner said to him, uh, to Rockman, if he punches, just keep your hands high. They're telling him not to counterpunch. The table's oh. been turned. Oh. Is it reversed? Seven, eight, nine. It's over. Lennox, Lennox Lewis, Lewis got revenge. Has captured his revenge. And now it's Rockman complaining in the corner that he didn't get the full count. Lennox Lewis fought a virtually perfect fight. 